Welcome Algebra 2 students. We are in lesson 29 today. Uh, we're going to talk about uniform motion problems. If you remember from Algebra 1, we discussed uniform motion problems and the fact that distance d equals rate times time. And we called that our dirt problem because if you put a little line right here, it spells the word dirt. And if you think about the fact that distance um, distance traveled, I should say, you're traveling over the earth and the earth is comprised of dirt, then this, it helps you to remember your dirt formula, we call it, or your uh, uniform motion is a dirt formula. So, um, we can illustrate distance equals rate times time by saying, what if, or what is the distance if I travel four miles per hour for two hours. Well, that's eight, eight, eight miles because four times two is eight, right? So my number of miles is going to be eight, four miles an hour for two hours. Um, hopefully, I am riding my bicycle or walking because that's pretty slow for a car. <clears throat> Sorry, I got a frog in my throat. But we can see that that is true, that rate times time does equal the distance when applied um, when you put the right variables in, okay? So let's erase this and do some illustrations of that. In the past, we've compared two distances or two people over the same distance. So we know their distances were equal so we had d1 was equal to d2, and we were just trying to find their rate or their time. Um, so if we said distance of 1 is equal to distance 2, we knew that the rate of 1 times the time of 1 would equal the rate of 2 times the time of 2, which meant we could, if we had the rate and time for one of these guys, and either the rate or the time for the other one, then we could find the missing variable through factoring. We knew we could do that, and those were fairly simple. Um, we just had to put the right items into the right space in the grid. So we would create a grid for ourselves. This was person one, this was person two, and this was the, their rate, and this was the time. And so we would drop it in. And for instance, we would say, okay, the rate of mom driving to grandma's house, um, we'll call number one mom, and we'll call number two grandma. How about that? So the rate of mom, mom would drive at 30 miles an hour, and she would drive for, oh, let's say half an hour. So we put in 0.5. Grandma would drive at 10 miles an hour. How long would it take her? We didn't know how long it would take her. But we know the distance is the same because mom would be driving to grandma's house. That's mom. And then grandma would be driving to our house, right? So what we would do is we would take mom. We'd say the rate of mom times the time of mom equaled the rate of grandma times the time of grandma. So we knew that the rate of mom was 30 times 0.5 would equal the rate of grandma, which was 10, but we didn't know her time. So this would end up being 15, and then this would be 10 uh, TG, and so we would divide 15 by 10, and we would divide this by 10, and we would find that the rate or the, the uh, time of grandma was one and a half hours. So 1.5 would be the time it would take grandma. And if we translate that into minutes, um, we know that mom could drive to grandma's house in half an hour at 30 miles an hour, which means that her distance was 15. It was 15 miles away, right? 
and Grandma, driving 10 miles an hour, would take an hour and a half because it was 15 miles away. Because when you multiply 10 times one and a half, you get 15 miles. But it took Mom a half an hour because she was driving three times the speed that Grandma was driving. So we can see how all of this kind of works together. And that's just a good review of what we did last year with uniform motion. So if you do not have this in your notes, now's the time to pause and take this down. This format also worked well for if someone was driving from to a certain spot and someone else was driving opposite to a different spot, but their distance was the same, right? They drove for the uh, same distance, but we were trying to figure out, you know, where they were going. Also, um, if they were driving towards each other and they had the same distance, but it took them different, different times. So those are some formats too that work with this analogy. As long as the distances are equal, then you can use this format here. Okay. All right. So take those notes, pause if you haven't done so, I'm going to clear the page. So now we're going to talk about, uh, in some problems, the sum of one distance and another distance equals a certain number. And we can illustrate that here. Let's do this. This is not necessarily that the distances are the same. They are along the same line, but we don't know if they are the same measurement. But we know that the total of the two is this number. Okay. Um, and that again, that works for if they're going towards each other, um, if they're going away from each other. All of these distances equal 460. So we can say that the distance plus the distance, distance of one and the distance of two, equals 460. We know that the two added together is this. We don't know that they're equal to one another. We don't know that they're the same distance. But because we know this is true, we could also know that this is true. The rate of one times the time of one plus the rate of the second one times the time of the second one would still equal the two distances added together. So then we can drop in the rate and the times to solve the equation. So let's try one of those. Uh, we're going to learn about Napoleon walking to a battle. So I'm going to take a moment and type this in for you because I think that'll be easier than me trying to um, write it up for you because my handwriting, as we know, is sometimes not the best. So I'm going to take a moment and do that and then I'll come right back. All right, so here's our problem. Napoleon walked part of the 60 miles to the side of the battle and rode the rest of the way. He walked at three miles per hour and he rode at nine miles per hour. If the total time of the trip was eight hours, how long did he walk? So we are given some information, but we are missing some of the others. Um, we have this diagram. His distance walking plus his distance riding equaled 60 miles. So we can draw this little diagram here. This is his distance walking plus his distance riding. And this is not to scale, I might add. I'm sure you, you know that. But we know that this distance is going to be 60 miles. That's our, that's our total. Um, so we have the distance walking. We can create a, a formula from that. Distance walking plus distance riding is going to equal 60. So we can create a, another equation from this. We can say the rate of walking times the time of walking plus the rate of riding times the time of riding 
is equal to 60 miles. So there's an equation, but we have four unknowns here. Um, let's see what we do have. We know we have that the rate of walking was three and that the rate of riding here, this was he walked at three miles per hour and he rode at nine. So the rate of riding was nine and the total time was eight hours. So we have the time of walking plus the time of riding was a total of eight hours. So we need to be able to drop these values in to solve for each um, type of travel and find out what they are. So in order to do that, we need to create a substitution here so that we can drop this in for one of these variables. So I'm, I usually use the one that is closest to the equal sign. Um, so we just subtract TR from both sides and this becomes TW equals eight minus TR. So the total time for walking equals the total of eight hours minus whatever the time writing was. If you think about it, that's logical. Uh, so now we can use this as a substitution for TW. So let's drop these values in as we have them. We have the time or the uh, rate of walking, which was three. That's here. Um, time walking is equal to eight minus TR. So we're going to drop that in here. Plus we have the rate that he rode, which is nine. Um, and we don't have the time that he wrote, so we leave that alone. Uh, so now we can solve this problem. And we're going to distribute here. That's going to be 24 minus 3TR plus 9TR equals 60. Uh, negative 3 and positive 9 is going to be 6 TR and 60 minus 24 is going to be 36. So the time uh, he rode is going to be 6 because 36 divided by 6 is 6. So now we know that Napoleon walked three miles per hour at a certain distance. We can solve for that actually. Now that we know what TR is, we can sub that in here. So the time that he walked is eight minus six because TR is six, so TW is gonna be two. So we know now that he walked uh, two miles at three miles per hour and that he rode for six miles at nine miles per hour. And that gave him a total time of eight hours. Oh, I'm sorry, that's not correct. Huh. Don't mind me, I'm losing my mind. We can drop these in for the distance. Um, RW is three, TW is two. So his distance was six. And RR is nine, TR is six, so that's 54. So he walked six miles and he rode 54 miles, sorry. I don't know what I was thinking. My brain was on a little crooked there. But you can drop them in for the variables here and that's what we did in this uh, little scenario right here to find out exactly how far he walked and exactly how far he rode. All right, and that is all I have. No, it's not. I have two more problems. <laughs>
<laughs> it's one of those days. All right, bear with me. Let's clear the page. And maybe I'll get with the program later on. Uh, let's do 29.2. There's, I'm, I'm a little distracted. There's a lot of stuff going on here at home. And um, it's a little bit hard to concentrate right now. I'm going to type this problem for you just like I did the last one. So give me a moment. All right, here's our problem. Edward Longshanks and Queen Eleanor were 54 miles apart at dawn. So we have, here's Edward and here's the Queen and this is 54 miles between them, All right? Edward began the journey to the meeting place at 8 a.m. So this is 8 a.m. for him. And he was traveling at three miles per hour. Two hours later, so that's 10 a.m., the queen set out to meet him. If they met at 4 p.m., how fast, they met right here together, how fast did the queen travel? All right, so let's see what we know right now. We know that the distance of Edward and the distance of the Queen, so those two added together, was 54 miles. They were separated by 54 miles. Okay, so the that tells us that the rate of Edward times the time of Edward plus the rate of the Queen times the time of the Queen is equal to 54, right? So what do we know? Well, we know he started out at 8 a.m. at 3 miles per hour. So we have his rate. The rate of Edward was 3. And they met at 4. So if he started at 8 and they met at 4, then the time of Edward is going to be uh, where am I at? It's going to be eight hours. Eight to 12 is four hours, and from 12 to four is another four hours. That's eight hours. So we have his rate and his time. Um, and we have the queen's time. So the time of the queen is she left at two hours later. So it's 10 a.m., so if she left two hours later, then the time of the queen is going to be six. So we have that much information that we can drop in. So all we have to do is put that into the formula, right? So the rate of Edward times the time of Edward, that's going to be three times eight plus uh, the rate of the queen times um, 6, which is the time of the queen, right, equals 54. So 24 plus 6 RQ equals 54. We subtract 24 from both sides. We know 6 RQ is going to be equal to 30. We divide both, by, both sides by 6. The rate of the queen is 5. So that tells us that um, the distance that Edward Longshanks traveled was 24. Edward was 24 miles. And the rate that the queen traveled, or the distance the queen traveled, was 30 miles. And she traveled at five miles per hour and he traveled at three miles per hour. So um, yeah, that works out well. So I ha I'm hoping that you guys can see that this is the formula here 
that we bring down and we fill the information, we drop the information into. So we put the rate of Edward here, which was here, time of Edward here, and the rate of the queen, we didn't know, that's what we were trying to find out, but we had the time of the queen, we put that in at six. So that's how we were able to solve this equation because we knew the total distance and we were able to extrapolate based on the information we were supplied with. All right, let's move on. We have one more problem um, in this lesson, one more example. So I'm gonna clear the page for us. And I am going to type it again because my handwriting would not only take forever, but might be slightly illegible. So I'm going to pause and type that for you. All right, this one looks kind of fun. At noon, Rocket Man whizzed off toward Rocket Land. One hour later, Moonfa whizzed off in the opposite direction at a speed 200 kilo kilometer, ugh, kilometers per hour, less than that of Rocket Man. If they were 11,800 kilometers apart at 5 p.m., how fast did each travel? All right, so first let's do our diagram. We know they started in the same spot, um, and Rocket Man went this way, and Moonfo went this way, and this is where they ended up at 5 p.m., okay? And that total distance was 11,800 kilometers. Um, so that tells us that the distance of Rocket Man plus the distance of Moonfa equals 11,800, which we can then turn into the rate of Rocket Man times the time of Rocket Man plus the rate of Moonfa times the time of Moonfa equals 11,800. Um, now, we have some information already. We are told that the time of Rocket Man uh, from noon to 5 is where they were 11,800 kilometers apart. So that's 5 hours. So the time of Rocket Man is 5 hours. The time of Moonfa is one hour less because she didn't leave or he didn't leave, whatever Moonfa is, until one o'clock. So from one to five, that's four hours. So we have that information. And we're also told that uh, Moonfa, her, that speed, so the rate of Moonfa is 200 kilometers per hour less than that of Rocket Man. So her rate is the rate of Rocket Man minus 200. Okay? So now we can actually solve for the rate of Rocket Man because we have three of the four variables we need. So I'm just going to drop this information in. We don't have the rate of Rocket Man, so that, that stays the same. We do have the time of Rocket Man, so we can say... Because of the commutative property of multiplication, we can put these in any order we want. So we're going to say 5 times RR for the sake of keeping the constant in front of the variable. Um, plus, the rate of Moonfa is RR minus 200 times the time of Moonfa, which is 4. And that equals 11,800. So you can see you're following this format here. Okay, you're following the format and you're dropping in the information um, for each variable. So now we're going to distribute here. We have 5RR, that just stays the way it is for now. 4 times RR is going to be 4 times RR minus 4 times 200 is 800. Now we're going to do our squish, okay? We're just solving an equation from this point on. So we're going to add 800 to this side because it's negative on this side, right? 
So that is, and we're going to add these two together. So 5 plus 4 is 9. So 9RR. R. And when we add 800 here, that becomes 12,600. So now we divide both sides by 9, and I'm going to need a calculator. So first of all, I'm going to double check and make sure my math is right here. Let me clear this. 11,800 plus 800. Okay, yes, my math is correct. Now I'm going to divide this by 9. That's going to be 1,400. So the rate of Rocket Man is 1,400. So we know that Rocket Man traveled. The question is asking us how fast did each travel? So Rocket Man traveled at 1,400, um, but the rate of Moonfa is the rate of Rocket Man minus 200. So 1,400 minus 200, the rate of Moonfa is 1,200. And that is the answer to the question. How fast did each travel? All right, and that is all we have for lesson 29. If you have any questions, rewatch the video, review your notes, make sure you take excellent notes. Um, draw lines. Sometimes we need to draw lines. That goes there, right? This went here. Uh, this is this, and this is this. We just drop that information in, just like a substitution. So start by giving an illustration so you can create your distance problem. Then you can transfer that into rate times time. Then you can find the information, uh, the variable information here, and create your grid. And then drop these variables, these values for these variables, into this formula and then solve for the missing information. All right, when you break it down and you think about it logically, you will be able to do it. It's all about this turning into this, okay? All right, I will see you in lesson 30.